spitting. Welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. <laughs> Sonia says, I never see your other book up there. Do I need it too? I don't have a copy of my other book. Isn't that weird? Actually, there's two other books. Uh, I have a copy of one of them. Uh, I have a copy of What's for Dinner Dexter. Um, the, I don't like the recipes in that one as much because they have more carbs. Um, and uh, the Canine Kitchen Capers is a fun book. It, uh, it's got recipes in it, but it also has funny stories. So if you need a good laugh, we all need a little cheering up these days, um, then the Canine Kitchen Capers is actually uh, great for a fun read. Um, I <laughs> We had to ship books out when we were out of books, so I had to ship out my last copy of Canine Kitchen Capers, and we don't even own one. <laughs> Not terrible. I might have some at the office. Anyway. That's the way it is. All right, two mornings in a row on time. Well, we were late. Uh, we're, this, we have this really weird thing going on with our Be Live program. It keeps telling us, and I think it, it, we think it's the computer, not the program, yes. um, where it keeps telling us that our camera is occupied by another program, and so we can't use it on this program, and we have no idea what the heck it's doing. Um, so, right, this time we're just using the computer camera and just winging it. So, um, yeah, fun reads are the way to go these days. Terry Pulsinelli I have on all four. Um, so, uh, anyway, I, I'm still working on my pain management class, and I did a, a really fun lecture, um, not yesterday because I was at work all day yesterday, the, uh, Monday, on trigger points, at myofascial trigger points. And these are something that every single one of us, I can just about guarantee, has suffered with at some point. Um, if you've had a leg cramp, a foot cramp, uh, a knot in your back, those are trigger points. So a, a trigger point occurs in a muscle belly or a muscle band. Um, so normally if we were to look microscopically or even macroscopically, if we could peel back the skin, and we'd see the muscle fibers all which way do I need to go? muscle fibers all running in a row, all lined up parallel to each other, and the same width, and you know, basically going from their point of origin to their point of insertion. So uh, you know, like we have muscles that start up on our vertebrae in our neck and go down across our shoulders. And um, when you get a trigger point, it's basically a cramp. In the muscle so the muscle gets activated by nerves that are irritated and so instead of being this long <laughs> this long it's just like doing stuff in the mirror instead of being this long stretched out muscle band it goes and it shortens up and so what happens is sort of the ends of the muscle strand that are holding the attachments on each end they get very taut and then in the middle, you get this round knot. So um, you can feel them, uh, you know, a lot of times, I had one in my neck the other day, and basically you roll your hand or your fingers back and forth across 
the muscle fibers and you'll and you can get them anywhere i have one right now believe it or not in a weird place uh actually i have a couple and i think it's due to my fall a couple days uh a week ago um i have one on the inside of my thigh just above my knee and i have one on the back of the same thigh right in the middle of my quads um and uh you know the the way that you and our dogs get them all the time cats can get them too just not as commonly we find them a lot of times in the front legs of dogs that have hind limb problems. So if they have uh, old cruciate injuries, hip dysplasia, um, arthritis in the back end, the front end is working so much harder. So they're pulling themselves when they go to get up. And when they go to lay down, they flop very quickly. And the, you know, the front end will usually slide out. We see Shotzi do this. Um, she just goes whoop and she's down. Um, and so the front end of these dogs can get really, really sore. So you might feel those muscle bundles across the top of their shoulders, on the back, uh, above the, uh, in the triceps, above the um, elbow area is another really common place to find them. So, uh, you know, when you're massaging, so you're just going to kind of do this sort of thing where you're rolling over. And if you have one, you'll hit a real, I've got one right there, you'll hit a real tender spot. Um, and your dog might turn around and go, ow, uh, because they are very tender. And really, um, let's see, Terry Holder says, change camera privacy settings if the error message pers persists. Try checking your camera privacy settings. Make sure the app you're using does have access, blah, blah. So Hugh, Hugh's working on it. Um, uh, so uh, particularly if you have uh, animals with hind end problems, look at the front end to start massaging and feeling around for these. So a lot of times I'll find them in the office when I'm doing my orthopedic exam or uh, neurologic exam, uh, particularly with animals with arthritis that are coming in to have that treated. And if I find, a lot of times I'll find them on the sides of the neck and you can just roll your fingers over them and it's just like, oh my gosh, there's a knot. It really, I got one right there, really feels like a knot. Um, so a couple things you can do if uh, it, it, it pained me, to, and I've had trigger point injections as well, and I've had acupuncture on trigger points. Uh, usually uh, our naturopath puts ozone injections into them. Oh my gosh, they hurt, uh, but they do help. Um, so the, on, the, on my course, they had this woman laying on a massage table, and you could see this knot uh, right across the top of her shoulder. I mean, it, it, it was just this huge knot. And so they took an acupuncture needle, about a two inch long acupuncture needle, and they just started jabbing it up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And you do it hundreds of times. And each time you jab it, you see the, the nerves twitch and you get this muscle jump. I mean, her whole body was like, Ugh. um, it hurts. It really hurts. So I couldn't, I can't do human medicine. I don't do human blood. I couldn't even watch that video to the end. I was just like, I'll, I'll just do this across my computer screen until they finish this and then I'll be good. They showed it on a dog. The dog was under anesthesia. So I was like, okay, I can watch that one because the dog was sedated for it. Um, I have put acupuncture needles or B12 injections in the middle of trigger points in dogs. I usually don't get bitten doing that because it's one poke, um, but I would not attempt the 100 jabs in a trigger point in an awake animal uh, without some pain meds or sedation on board because we're, we're going to get killed. Um, but you at home, if you find them, you can do acupressure or you can massage them. Um, and it was really interesting that they, they had a video of an orthopedic exam on a boxer and the boxer had some hip dysplasia and stifle problems as well. They commonly go together. And so they picked up one leg of the one hind leg of the dog and then put pressure down over the hip area. And on one side, the dog could support itself and it would just kind of bounce on the other side. The dog would collapse and uh, they sedated the dog took care of the trigger points. When the dog was awake, they repeated the same thing, lifting a leg and pressing down from the top. And the dog was very strong on both sides. So just that one trigger point treatment made a huge difference in this dog's ability to support itself because the muscle was strong again instead of being stuck in a knot. So um, for, for use at home, when I find trigger points on animals, I will show the 
client where it is, have them feel it, and then their homework is you need to massage this area as deep and hard for as long as your pet will put up with. So some of these are so sensitive that they barely tolerate a light touch. If you put a warm towel or something, put it warm the area up first to try to soften the muscles a little, get some more blood flow into the area, that will help make the massage even more effective. Um, but once you find those areas, you can either just apply camera pressure with your thumb straight down on them or your forefinger, whatever is most comfortable for you, um, right in the middle of that, that knot and see if they'll put up with it. So a lot of times when I'm working on the computer for long periods, I'll get them in my neck you know, or in my shoulder. And I'll literally be sitting here working on the computer with one, with this finger stuck in the middle of that knot, just, you know, pressing and pressing and jiggling it and rolling it and just saying, oh, you gotta get out of there. And um, a lot of times, you know, five minutes of that, it'll disappear. So uh, this is why I love going to the massage therapist because she finds those trigger points, man, and she just works on them and works on them and works on them. Um, and I'm one of those people that the, the harder, the deeper the massage, like get your elbows in there, get your knuckles in there um, and really go after them because they make me crazy. Uh, but um, when you find these on your animals, see what they'll put up with. So when I give that homework, I'm like, look, I wanna see this dog again in a week and we're gonna do another chiropractic adjustment or we're gonna do another acupuncture session or cold laser or all of the above, depending on how serious it is. But your homework, is to work on that area and I want this soft when you come in next week. And so common areas that you will find right uh, on, the, on the back, on either side of the spine, uh, right behind the back of the rib cage. That's a really common area. Uh, it's lumbar, vertebrae, two, three. Um, those are the ones that are in, have the nerves that are in charge of the stifles and the whole hind end. Their acupuncture points, bladder 23, bladder 24 are right there. And uh, they're responsible for kidney, which is responsible for bone. So real good areas uh, to massage. Oh, you have a massage today at noon. You go monthly. I, I used to until COVID. <laughs> um, how's baby Sarah doing? Baby Sarah, it, get a little cross ball effective. Yeah, there you go. Uh, baby Sarah's doing incredibly well. She's incredibly adorable. And Gwen said she's not moving off her sofa. She's going to sit there and enjoy uh, the, the baby moments <laughs> forever. <laughs> So she doesn't miss them. And Brandon said she's absolutely perfect. Um, uh, we'll see. You know, after they've had a couple weeks of no sleep, we'll, we'll see. But I, I, I'm pretty sure that Sarah can do no wrong. So um, anyway, so when when you uh, are sitting on your sofa, petting your dogs, or sitting on the floor with your dogs, cats, whatever, um, you know, run your hands over them and you know. Touch them just deeply enough, especially along those muscle bundles behind the, the you know, the, the elbows, over the shoulders, down the back, front and back of the hind legs. See if you find any of those little knots and see if you can soften them up. Uh, you're probably not going to get an immediate, like you're probably not going to get them out in one session. Um, and you want to apply pressure as hard as the pet will tolerate. So if they're moving closer to you, they're saying, ooh, give me a little more, give me a little more. If they're kind of pulling away or they get up and leave, it was too hard. Um, so you want to do it to their tolerance. And you'll find as you start to soften it up over a few days that they'll be leaning in more going, okay, we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere, you know, a little harder, a little harder. Okay, ooh, we're getting somewhere. Um, and you'll be amazed that with some work, you can get these to, to disappear. So... Okay, honey, should we give our dogs meals using your stagnation recipes at the same time as we do those uh, massages? So anything that moves blood uh, and resolves stagnation, because um, uh, a bruise or a knot like that, that is an area of stagnation. I mean, it's an area where we got a knot, we got a stuck knot. So uh, yeah, uh, diets to or, or adding some herbs that are blood movers uh, that resolve stagnation. So just look at the list of, of foods, you know, foods, herbs, whether it's meats, uh, grains, fruits, veggies. And even if you don't change the whole diet, you might add a little bit of that. Like ginger is very good. Cinnamon's very good. You might just add a little bit of that to the diet to kind of get things moving, get that blood flowing and help resolve that stagnation. And like I said, uh, heat. 
So warm compresses, just be careful that you don't have things so hot that you're going to cause any burns. Uh, but warm that area up. You can even just warming by holding your hand over that area and allowing the heat to kind of generate under your hand before you start doing the massage. Warm that area up a little bit. It'll help a lot. Okay. <laughs> Georgie, you're wearing your hat, buddy. <laughs> Come here, you little muffin. Come say hi. Georgie's being very jaunty with his <laughs> hat. Come here. Give me your hat. There you go. Say hi. You good grooming, bud. You think you got bedhead. Have a great day, everybody.